What's up guys? So today we're going to be talking about the things that need to be done to the Cherokee, uh, kind of everything that's wrong with it that I need to fix it before I can kind of really get to driving it and then just maybe some future plans for it and then I got a couple other cool things to show you guys like uh, I got a ton of paperwork from the previous owner on the Jeep so it's got the original window sticker and stuff like that so we'll talk a little bit about that too so uh, to start as you can see here the front wheel here uh, it's missing that center hubcap or like wheel cap type looking thing so I found one online I ordered that that should be shipping today so that'll be coming in um, as you can see here, we got a little bit of a, some paint missing here. So I'll probably obviously sand this down and buy some, uh, touch up paint and, uh, probably respray the door, parts of the door, um, before that starts to rust. And, you know, a couple different spots here, this might be able to polish out. I'm going to probably wait for a lot of this to do once it's warm out because, uh, you know, trying to paint when it's you know zero degrees out is a little difficult so a lot of that I'll just keep an eye on make sure it doesn't rust if anything I'll spray it with some rust back to metal or some uh, rust-oleum rust reformer I'll spray that um, another thing I got to take care of is a little bit of the surface rust underneath here I might do that I might take it to a garage a heated garage at my buddy's place and uh, just get that cleaned up just sand it and then spray that with rust back to metal just for winter um, I do plan on pulling the Jeep up here every time I drive it and hosing it off I got a new hose set up that I can drain uh, the water so it won't freeze um, so that'll be I think a big help for this keeping this nice is basically just keeping the salt off of it so another issue that this has is you can see the weather stripping is all cracked and destroyed here. So obviously I need to get uh, new new seals, new door seals. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to get these at, but uh, that'll be interesting to find out. Uh, I might replace the door handles. There's a couple cracks. I mean, they work fine. But obviously it's got a crack and it doesn't look that great but we'll see i might uh use some of my uh ammo pro frame trim coat on these to kind of bring them back and just kind of see what they look like but they, they function fine so i'm not too too worried about that uh, another thing that i have to figure out is you can see the gap on the tailgate is is not is not right here so uh, it's pretty decent up here actually it's even kind of far away but you can see here it looks like this is shifted kind of this way so I gotta figure out how to shift it back up I think I'm not exactly sure how to access this I'm guessing it's in the headliner area or under the headliner I don't know so we'll see that might be a pain in the butt but um, it closes fine and it doesn't really rattle I guess it does kind of rattle but uh, yeah, if you push on the corner here you can kind of you can kind of hear it. So that's got to get taken care of. I know the rear uh, wiper motor does not work either. Um, so I got to figure that out. Um, that's not really that big of a deal to me. But the motor does need to be replaced. Um, everything back here is fine. It's missing one of the little, I don't know, whatever you want to call these. Missing one of those. I don't know. Not that big of a deal to me. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I do want to get this fixed because I think this just doesn't, it just doesn't look right. You know, it hanging off there. So if anyone's got an XJ, uh, these older XJs with this style door, uh, let me know kind of if you guys have any insight on how to fix that. But I think it is just, uh, just bumping these forward because it looks like it kind of sagged down. So, but, uh, little rust hole here that the previous owner I think just put some like some type of tape on here um, so gotta fix that but other than that the rust is pretty decent um, guess we'll look on the inside really nothing to fix on here uh, I did notice that the wiper blades when I turn them on and I turn them off they stay wherever they were in the the wipe cycle so they don't return back so that's kind of a little bit of an issue I need to fix. Uh, the four-wheel drive works great on it. The transmission shifts smooth. The clutch 
little, um, I don't know what you would call it, the little actuator or reservoir, whatever you want to call it, um, it's leaking a little bit of bra brake fluid onto the fuse box. And I know that's really bad. So I stuck a little paper towel there for now. I don't know how bad the leak is. I haven't really driven it around yet. So I'll uh, leave it up there for a little bit and see how bad it is. And then probably just order that part. That's a pretty inexpensive part. So we'll get that and then show you guys under the hood. Oh yeah, another thing that is broke here is the the dome light uh, little switch here to, sh to let the Jeep know when to turn the lights on and off. So I'll get a new one of those. So that works. But everything else in the interior is okay. Okay, so already fixed the fuel pressure regulator issue. It still was taking a while to crank over. So I'm assuming that something's bad in the pump. The... Uh, so what I think I might do is add a a check valve in the in the line itself to help the dr fuel from draining back. Uh, but we'll see. There was another issue that might be causing some more problems. Battery cable that <laughs> is completely fried. So this is going from the positive battery down to the starter. So I ordered some new... Uh, battery cables from Jeep cables and uh, so those hopefully be coming soon because then I can get the Jeep up and running again but it's kind of amazing how this thing was running no problem with all of this exposed wire and it's all green and nasty up here so kind of amazed but uh, but yeah so I pulled that out and uh, so I'm going to be redoing all the wiring here all the ground wires and adding a ground wire from the, the intake manifold to the body adding a body ground because that wasn't even uh, on this Jeep either. So yeah, that's pretty much that. I figured out my cooling issue. So I replaced the thermostat in this. It didn't act, it didn't even have a thermostat. So this Jeep was from Florida. So I'm guessing the previous owner didn't need the thermostat, I guess. And uh, so there wasn't one in there. So I bought one, threw it in, and then now it gets up to temperature and I uh, got all the air out of the system. So. We're good to go that way, but uh, I got to do an oil change yet. I just want to be safe, um, you know, just get a new vehicle, just change the oil. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it under the hood. Otherwise, it was running fine, even with the this horrible uh, wire there. But uh, glad I found that out um, before actually going for a drive. Cause, and especially when I had my fuel leak issue, that would have been real interesting. All these this fuel dripping down of the vapors. So I'm glad that didn't... Uh, didn't blow my Jeep up. But, uh, oh yeah, another issue too is this radiator isn't actually secured properly. It's just kind of, you hear that scraping? That's It's literally just moving underneath this piece here. So, got to fix that. And then another issue is the previous owner had this, the electronic fan um, constantly on. He had this plug right here. He had it... Uh, just cut um had two wires or one wire in there so it was always on what's supposed to happen is there's supposed to be a temperature sensor right here and there isn't one so i'm probably gonna have to order an one of those and it looks like I don't, this radiator might not even be proper for this year this might just be maybe a newer xj radiator so i might just wire a a switch to this and put it inside the dash and just flick it on um, you know when I'm sitting in traffic or you know in the winter time here it's this I this isn't even necessary uh, it's so cold here but you know in the summertime um, so we'll see I might just buy a whole new radiator proper for this year and then get the temperature sensor and make the whole system work properly uh, but in the meantime instead of having this constantly on I'll probably maybe just wire it up to a switch and just be able to manually turn it on and off um, if the Jeep's getting hot or not. But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for under the hood. Oh, and then another thing too, this Jeep is way too quiet. So I'm probably gonna take the exhaust, the muffler off, see how it sounds, see if it sounds kind of rednecky with it being a Cherokee. My, my Wrangler sounds decent with that, but I don't know. But I do have my old Banks exhaust, which I'll go get here quick. So I originally had bought a Banks muffler uh, for my TJ. 
So I might try to rig this up into there if the, the muffler delete doesn't sound great. Um, I'll just try to slap that guy in there instead of the muffler that's in there now. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, future plans for the Jeep, maybe wheels and tires. I don't know. It's These wheels are oddly growing on me. Um, I don't know. It just kind of gives it that really classic Cherokee look. But because uh, it's an 89, so it's a little bit older. But uh, but yeah, other than that, there's a little crack in this tail light here. Little crack there. I might get new tail lights. New tail lights are only like 60 bucks or something for it. So I might get new tail lights. Definitely gonna get rid of all the chrome. Um, I'm just not a big fan of chrome, as you guys know. So probably paint the rear bumper black. Paint this trim around the windshield. Paint that black as well. Paint the rail here black, the roof rack, that all be black. Um, and then up front here, paint the bumper black as well. And then I uh, need to find a screw here for the for this little piece here. Gotta find a screw for that. But uh, other than that, I don't know. I don't know if I want a black grill or not, or just keep it paint matched. I don't know. Kind of up in the air on that for sure. But uh, And then also, the windshield uh, trim paint that black as well I got to do that on my Comanche as well but, uh, but yeah so get rid of the chrome and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so it's just gonna be my nice little winter ride around uh, when I go to the gun range being able to fold the seats down fully is gonna be great so I can actually haul stuff uh, that the TJ wasn't great I got some longer I got a longer rifle that won't fit inside the TJ so with its case anyway so uh, but yeah so anyway, all right, so last thing I want to show you guys is I have all of all of this paperwork, which is really neat. So I have the original uh, warranty book here. Here's the original window sticker. So 17 City, 23, 22 Highway. Total was $19,318.89. Um, so these are no extra charge, four-wheel drive system, Two speed shift on the fly, uh, 20 gallon fuel tank, and then the Pioneer. The Pioneer package includes floor carpet gauge group, uh, light group, rocker, recliner, fabric seats, uh, which are those. I think the seats kind of like they rock back and forth, which is kind of interesting. I think mine's broke. It doesn't doesn't rock back and forth. It just kind of stays put. Um, let's see, uh, seats. Wheel trim rings, four AM FM stereo, radio was four speakers. You got the two in the uh, rear hatch and then the two um, in the front doors. And then um, rear quarter vent if you have a two door, which is interesting. And then rear window wiper washer and then uh, some different tires. And then soft feel sports steering wheel. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that the uh, Pioneer package is 1217 bucks, which is interesting. And then uh, this one's got a console with armrest, which was 118 um, We got the visibility group, which includes left and right remote control uh, mirrors, which those are missing. The actual, the actual like, remote control part is, is missing. So it's kind of interesting. But uh, what else we got? Um, five-speed manual transmission, no charge. Air conditioning was 820 bucks, which I think that seems like a lot. Uh, the roof rack, 136 bucks. Cruise control, so it's got cruise for $222. Tilt steering wheel, and uh, the the spare in the back. But uh, yeah, so I thought this was really neat. But cool, it had the original window sticker, and this is another cool one. This is a uh, new vehicle preparation, inspection, and road test. So this was done. When it was new and then I have a ton all of this is all maintenance that's been done on the Jeep over the years I got stuff from like the 2000s like 03 2002 so it's had a ton of work done to it which is really nice to know that it's been taken care of uh, for its entire life which kind of explains how nice the inside is and how relatively well the outside is for the age so but yeah I just thought that was cool to show you guys um, that and then I guess one other cool thing I got is I found some on eBay, of course. So, of course, you can find anything you need on eBay. But I found some new old stock uncut keys. Um, so I had these. 
I had these keys made uh, for the Jeep. And uh, yeah, I took it to uh, Ace Hardware, which they're awesome there. And uh, they're not supposed to cut keys. Uh, they usually don't cut customer keys. And uh, the guy there, he had cut my Comanche keys. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, you know, we're really not supposed to you know, cut customer keys if we break them. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, you did my Comanche keys. I was like, could you just do these keys? And he's like, well, yeah, maybe. And I, and I said, I said, what keys? And then he goes, I like the way that sounds. And he took them. And then he actually didn't even charge me for these. So he went and cut them for me, uh, which was really cool of him to do. But uh, so I got some actually nice keys. The other keys were just some random brand keys. So it's uh, my Comanche's got these keys. So I got these keys now for that, too. But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for the Cherokee. So I just got to wait for those battery cables to show up and then I can get that all hooked up and then I can actually go drive it and uh, see if anything else is wrong with it. But uh, so far, that's all the known issues and uh, just kind of the plans for, for the Cherokee. But, uh, but anyway, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give the video a thumbs up. That helps me out a bunch, guys, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video.